When your app offers the capability for users to log in, you will end up essentially with two views of your app, a logged in and a logged out view. So we need to check whether the user is logged in and show them the app or the login screen accordingly. With file-based routing, we can't just conditionally define screens in a layout file like you might do with React Navigation. Instead, we use redirects to direct the user to the correct route. Let's see how that works. The auth flow in a router project looks like this. When a screen is requested, before we render it, we check whether the user is authenticated. If they're not, they get redirected to a login screen. So the key to building auth flows with a router is redirects. But where to handle this logic? This is the app I want to show to my logged in user. The exact content is irrelevant, but basically, it contains all the screens I want to make sure that no one can access without being logged in, even if they deep link into it. The obvious place to put this logic is in this layout file because it is above all the other screens. And so the code in this file gets executed before any of these screens get served. But we have a problem. It is the root layout file and we can't currently use redirects in the root layout. Just a note that this will be supported in the future, but for now, grouping folders to the rescue. Let's create a grouping folder for all of our protected routes and a new root layout file, one level up. Now, the layout file next to all of our protected routes is free to use redirects, and we can easily add a login and other pages that can be accessed without being authenticated. Let's create a new grouping folder called protected and we'll move the whole contents of our app folder in there. We'll also need a new root layout file. So let's create one in app. The root layout file will default export a stack navigator. I will also move the tailwind import and status bar from the old root layout to the new one. And I'll tidy up the old layout so it just returns a stack. Now let's create a screen in the app folder for login.tsx. This will be the page where the user logs in or registers. For now, let's just return a view and some text. After changing the root layout, I do find it's a good idea to restart the bundler. And now when I reload the app, it's looking quite a lot like it did before. We do have this additional title here that we probably don't want, which is added automatically because this protected layout is now part of the stack. But we can easily hide this by listing the screen in the root layout and setting header shown to false. When you open the app, the index route gets rendered first. In our case, it is the home tab of our bottom tabs layout. The index route is a route whose path name is just a slash. So how do we work out the path name? Well, let's take this home screen, for example. Right click on the file and copy relative path. Routes start with the app folder, so everything before that we can safely get rid of. Now, when a file is called index, the word isn't included as part of the route. It is just the index route for that folder. And we can't call the file an empty string, so index is the convention. So when figuring out the route, we can always remove index. Any folders with parentheses around them are grouping folders. They are a way to organize screens and define layouts without adding a segment to the route. So they actually go away as well. And this is how we end up with the index route. Why is this relevant for authentication? Well, when the app is launched, router will attempt to load this index route and all the navigators along its path. The order in which these files are loaded is basically all of the layout files 
starting with the one in the app folder, and finally the screen itself. So the root layout will always get rendered first, and it will also return the first navigator. This will start off the navigation tree for your app. This is also why you can't use redirects in the root layout, because if we returned a redirect here instead of a navigator, the navigation tree just wouldn't exist. So we're returning a stack navigator and we can go further. The next layout file that gets rendered is the one in this protected folder and it returns a stack navigator. Then the one in the tabs folder returns a tab navigator. The one in the home grouping folder returns a stack navigator and finally our index route gets rendered. So in any of these layout files, if we didn't return a navigator, the screen wouldn't get rendered. And that's why the layout file in our protected folder is the perfect place to handle any authentication logic, because we know the code in here will get executed before any of these screens get rendered. Let's hard code a constant value for now. So we'll say is logged in is false. And we'll use the redirect component from Expo Router. And we'll add an if statement saying that if we're not logged in, we're going to get redirected to the login screen. And now when I reload the app, I am taken to the login screen. If I set is logged in to true and reload the app, then I get to see the protected routes. Now, we want to be able to read and edit this value from both this layout file as well as the login screen. For that, we need some kind of state management. Feel free to use your favorite state management library here. I'm going to stick with React Context just to keep this unopinionated. In utils, let's create a file called authcontext.tsx. And let's figure out what values you want to make accessible. We'll need a boolean for whether you're logged in or not. And let's also add functions that initiate login and logout. Now we'll create the auth context using create context from React. I'll pass in the auth state type. And because I made all the options mandatory, I'll also need to pass in a initial value. Let's export the auth provider itself. We're going to wrap our root layout with the auth provider, so this would be accessible from anywhere. So we'll need to make sure this auth provider accepts children, which we can type with props for children, and returns these children wrapped in the auth provider. Finally, the value that we pass into the auth provider is the auth state, which we can manage inside this component. So I'll create a use state value for is logged in. And I'll also create the little constant functions for login and logout. All of these will pass in to the provider value and they will now be available from the auth context. Finally, in the root layout, we import the auth provider and wrap the entire app with it. This makes the auth context available everywhere. Now in a protected layout, we can access this auth context with use context and we'll use the locked in value from there. In the login screen, let's also read from the auth context and we'll add a button that calls the login function from the context. And this will set the is logged in value to true. Just setting this Boolean won't actually navigate us to the locked in view of your app. We'll also need to navigate to the index page. So let's use the use router hook to get access to the router. And after setting the logged in state value to true, let's also replace the current screen with the index screen. So now when I refresh the app and log in, it switches to my logged in state. It's important here to do a replace rather than a push, because if we did a push, then the user could swipe back to the login screen using gestures which is usually not what we want. Let's also add a corresponding log out button in the fourth screen of our bottom tabs layout. So we'll import the auth context, render the button and call log out. 
and same as with login, we'll navigate to the login screen. This navigation would actually happen automatically because if is logged in changes, the protected layout gets re-rendered and this redirect would get called. But I think it's still nice to be explicit here. Finally, this default slide animation doesn't look very natural for login flows. So in the root layout, let's set the animation for the protected navigator to none. And we'll also do the same for the login screen. So now when we log in or log out, it will happen without an animation. Now we've stored our logged in state in this use state variable, which means that it's in memory. So when we refresh the app, it gets reset to the initial value. Not the best UX for a real world application. Instead, we would like to persist this value, meaning we want to save it to device storage and read it on launch. I'm going to use async storage for this, which is supported on both Expo Go and dev builds. If you are using a state management library like Redux Toolkit or Yotai or Zustand or Legend State, then all the modern ones will have adapters for persisting the state in async storage. Now let's install async storage and restart the bundler. Now, whenever this all state gets updated when we log in or out, we want to also persist it into async storage. My all state is just going to have a boolean for whether we're logged in or not, because I'm not actually hooking up to a backend. But in the real world, you might store an all token, refresh token, expiry date, or other metadata here. Let's define a key for our auth storage. So this is the key against which our auth state is going to be stored. It's always good to use a try catch when interacting with async storage. Now we'll need to convert our auth state object into a string because async storage can only store key value pairs of strings. We'll import async storage and call async storage set item with the all storage key and the value we want to set. Now let's sync the persisted storage for the auth state whenever login and log out are called. Now we also need to fetch this initial value correctly when the app is first launched. For this, we will use a use effect from React with an empty dependencies array. Fetching items from async storage is asynchronous, but the function passed to use effect is synchronous. So the way to get around it is we define an asynchronous constant function, get all from storage, and call it in use effect, but not await it. Let's do a try catch again. It's just good practice when working with async storage. And we will call async storage get item, and we get the value that was stored against this key that we set. This value will be null on initial launch, but otherwise we expect it to be this stringified object that we saved. So we will call JSON pass on it and hopefully get our object and set the value for is logged in from the auth state. There's one more thing to do. Because this is asynchronous, we want to make sure that our redirect doesn't happen until we're sure that we've determined the initial all state. Let's add another use state variable for is ready. Let's also add it to the auth state, have it default to false, and return it from the auth context. And in our get auth from storage function, after the try catch, let's set it to true. Now let's open the protected layout file and I'll show you why it's needed. In the app, I'm going to log in. So this would have saved the logged in state. But when I reload the app, I get taken to the login screen again. Now let's open the protected layout and add another if statement above the first one that says if the auth state is not yet ready, return null. Now, when I log in and refresh the app, I do get taken to the logged in state. 
Let me add some console logs here just so you see why this is happening. So when I reload the app, the initial render will have both is ready and is logged in as false. So previously without is ready, we would already get redirected to the login page and this layout doesn't get rendered again. But now that if we ignore the logged in state, if is ready is false, once is ready is true, the layout gets re-rendered and we get logged in or redirected based on this value. Fetching all state from storage is actually pretty speedy, but it might not be in a real world scenario. What if determining the initial auth state takes a non-trivial amount of time? Maybe you need to do an API request to refresh your JWT. Let's add a one second delay here, just so we could see what it looks like. Now when I refresh the app, the splash screen goes away, we get a blank screen, and then we see our app, which is not really ideal. The tried and tested way to handle this is to keep the splash screen up until the initial app state has been determined. I'm using Xvergo to demo this, which is pretty limited when it comes to splash screen testing. Hopefully you are using a dev build, so it looks a bit nicer, but I'll swap out the app icon here so you can see the loading a bit better. Now on top of the auth context, let's call splash screen prevent auto hide async. This splash screen element is included in Xvergo router. This prevents the splash screen from hiding. So when I reload the app, the splash screen just stays there and I can decide when to hide it. At the bottom of our auth context, let's add another use effect. This one will have is ready in the dependency array. So we want it to re-render when is ready changes. And we simply hide the splash screen if the auth state is ready. And now when we reload the app, we get a seamless splash screen to initial app state experience. In this video, we've seen how to implement an auth flow with Xvorata and persist the auth state across app launches. The code for the example is in the description. And by the way, you could use the same exact pattern to add an onboarding flow to your app. See you next time.